Good day to each and every one of you, and thank you for looking at this program and watching this program. This is a special presentation of History Matters. I am Walter Dalton, and History Matters is a series of presentations sponsored by the Isothermal Community College Library. The key person in all of that is library specialist Kathy Webb and her team that has put this History Matters uh, series together. Uh, we had a meeting not long ago at the Isothermal Community College Library Auditorium where several presentations were made. And today we're going to be doing a, a TV interview with an icon here at Isothermal Community College. Jay Coombs was an instructor here for 31 years in the broadcasting department. He's been a radio personality for 45 years and he is someone who is beloved here at Isothermal Community College. And we look forward to learning more about Jay and about his uh, career here. And he also was, I think, 26 years as Mr. Friday Night Football at WCAB Radio for the high school games here in Rutherford County. Jay, it's our pleasure to have you here at History Matters and to have you back on the campus of Isothermal Community College. Welcome. Thank you, Walter. It, it's always great to be back on campus, and gosh, I invested three decades of my life here, uh, so even walking in the door today, it still feels like home away from home. Well, it is to you. Uh, you again, you were really iconic here. The, the students loved you. You were a personality on uh, WNCW, and you saw it grow. Uh, you've done so many things, uh, but when you're announcing, when you're calling those high school games, you're talking about everybody else. Today, we want to talk about you. So tell me a little bit about where you grew up and what interested you in broadcasting and, and some of your past experiences. Well, I grew up in Evansville, Indiana, uh, born and raised there. Uh, I should have known from a very early age that I was meant to be a broadcaster. Uh, believe it or not, I was in the fifth grade, fifth grade in grade school. And at our school, we had a math instructor who also worked at a local TV station. And Mr. Holder came up with the idea, I think we can have a grade school radio station. And we would set up early morning before classes started, at lunchtime, we had a turntable, we actually played records, we had a microphone to talk into, and we had a reel-to-reel -reel tape machine. And that was it. We did 15-minute shows, and one person would be trading out the records, the other person had to talk, to allow time to change the record. And it was a lot of fun, a 15 minute show, but I fell in love with it in the fifth grade, uh, continued with it when I got to high school. As a freshman, I found myself once again down at the bottom of the barrel. And although there were opportunities to continue with broadcasting, I was not going to be able to do that until I was at least a sophomore. Well, by the time my sophomore year came, I could not wait. Uh, I was part of a radio broadcasting class where we produced a 15-minute show every week that aired on a local radio station. My teacher worked part-time at that station. At the age of 16, he approached me one day and he said, would you be interested in a part-time job at the radio station? Well, my friends were working at the grocery store, the convenience stores, the discount stores, and I was absolutely just beyond belief to be even offered an opportunity at 16 to get into the radio business. Of course I said yes. I had the Sunday morning show. And the Sunday morning show, it was quite interesting because there were a lot of church programs, 
There were a lot of preacher tapes, but in between it, I would get to play a little bit of gospel music and I would have to assemble a newscast on a regular basis. Uh, from there, it just grew. Uh, I started to work more. I got more shifts, better time slots. I got to do more with the music, more with the announcing. And then the career just took off. I worked in Evansville at several different stations, both radio and TV. Um, went to Oklahoma to go to college, and that's when I landed in Tulsa, uh, also Oklahoma City market, and then eventually ended up here in North Carolina. But it has been a lifelong passion. Well, tell us a little bit of how you did end up in North Carolina. I mean, Indiana and Oklahoma are quite some distance away yep. from uh, Rutherford County, North Carolina. So what brought you to North Carolina and also to Isothermal Community College? It was a bit of a fluke, to be honest. Uh, I was at Central State University in Edmond, Oklahoma, finishing my bachelor's degree in broadcasting. And at that point in time, this is 1989, we didn't have the internet. Uh, we would actually pull out trade magazines to look for job listings. So one day I'm looking through and I find a job listing for an instructor, Isothermal Community College, Spindale, North Carolina. Well, my mentor uh, there at the college, we look at it and he said, look at this. Minimum require bachelor's degree, which I mm -hmm. had just obtained. He said, you should really look into that. He says, I think you would really enjoy that. And he says, I think you'd do well at it. And I said, Doc, mm -hmm. I said, I don't know anything about North Carolina except the Tar Heels. And I said, yeah, I, I remember going to the Great Smoky Mountains. <laughs> but I said, this town is called Spindale. And I said, oh, I know there are a lot of Cherokees in North Carolina. Maybe this is a Cherokee school. <laughs> I, and I kid you not, the first map that I looked at, Spindale was not on that map. Fort City was, Rutherfordton was, but Spindale was not on that map. I remember the first time I contacted the college I talked to a woman named Luana, and I was like, Luana, I don't know what kind of school this <laughs> is. I said, I honestly don't know what I'm walking into. And when they set me up for the interview, I flew to Greenville, and then I drove up here. But as soon as I came on campus, I was like, wow. this." This was like a gym that I wasn't expecting. And had my interviews, and once I toured the communication building, oh, I, the facilities were, were fantastic. Uh, a lot of people don't realize, but what we have built here at Isothermal it's incredible. Well, we, what, what you helped build, you called it a fluke. I think it was probably more providence than anything. <laughs> and I want you to know that you have helped put Spindell on the map uh, <laughs> because you've had a great career here. And when you came to Isothermal, it was beautiful. But at that time, I think I'm right that WNCW would have still been in its infancy. Mm -hmm. So as we're very proud of WNCW here at Isothermal Community College, and you've been a big part of that, and you've seen it grow and change. Uh, what was it like when you first came here? What were your first impressions of WNCW, and what's it like today? I'll be honest with you. When I first heard what the radio station was doing, my initial reaction, this is never going to work. They were playing so many different genres of music. Mm -hmm. And I was like, 
anybody in the radio business knew, you had to find a niche. Mm -hmm. And you had to go with a specific genre of music. But here, we were mixing up bluegrass with jazz and with acoustic and world music and even some classical in the early days. And I'm like, this is never going to work. And it did. And I think what I discovered early on, the WNCW listener is a very eclectic listener. They like a lot of different types of music without being forced into picking only one. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing that was interesting about the radio station in the early days, it literally was run by a handful of full-time employees. Everybody else was volunteer. And sometimes that proved to be a bit of a challenge in the early days. Uh, I can remember personally, uh, during fun drives, uh, somebody had to get the ice. <laughs> and I'd be like, okay, give me a cooler, I'll go fetch the ice. Well, somebody needs to go pick up the food. Okay, I'll go pick up the food. But in the early days of the radio station, that was what helped it grow, was that volunteer investment. And now, wow, not only has the radio station grown in terms of space, but the number of full-time employees, but the volunteers still a vital part of the station. Absolutely. It's, it's a great asset, not only yes. of the college, but of not only this community, but all of Western North Carolina. Very, very proud of it, and thank you for all of your efforts uh, over the years with WNCW. Uh, you were an iconic instructor here. The, the <laughs> students absolutely loved you, and I, I know one year I think you won the Eves Award, which was yep. the top, top teacher that year, or instructor that year. Uh, you had not done any teaching, uh, I don't think, before you came to Isothermal. Yeah. You read that ad, so what was it like teaching, uh, comparing those early years to the later years, and, and what did you like most about teaching, and what did you not like most about teaching? I was in the unique position, and I came out of industry. Now, I had gone back to college to finish my degree work, uh, but Coming out of industry into the community college, it actually worked very well. I always told my students, I said, teacher, no, I'm not a teacher. Instructor, eh, I can kind of live with that a little bit. But really what I am is a facilitator. Mm -hmm. And I said, it is my job to share what you need to know if you want to get into this industry. Radio, TV broadcasting, audio, video production. And I don't know how to explain it exactly, but it is on the job training. And I said, okay, I know you have to take some math, you'll have to take some English, you may have to take a psychology course, but I said, all of our broadcasting classes, think of it as on-the-job training, because two years' time, we cannot teach you everything you need to know. But we can feed you enough that you can take that, get into the business, and then build from there. Let me ask you about that, too, because this broadcasting uh, program at Isothermal, I think, is one of the best in the state yet we're in Rutherford, Polk County is who yeah. we serve. There are no TV stations housed within those two counties. There's some radio stations, but not a plethora of jobs out there. So uh, are isothermal students able to find jobs in the surrounding area? And uh, are there people who aren't really thinking about going into broadcasting, but are interested in lighting and public speaking, and how can they benefit from this program? Yes, yes, and yes, but the first thing a student needs to accept or, or to answer is, are you willing to go to where the jobs are? Yes, we do have radio stations here locally, but they are small stations, and if you're comfortable 
uh, with a minimum wage job. Uh, you will not get rich. You may earn enough to eat uh, and survive, but are you willing to move up the ladder to the medium market, to the larger market? Are you willing to relocate to where the jobs are? Obviously, if a student answers no, they are very limited. But thankfully, most of our broadcasting students have been very open. Uh, our graduates, wow, uh, they have gone to the networks. I can think, and I'm going to miss somebody, but we've had a graduate working at ESPN. We've had a graduate working at BET, based out of Washington, D.C. We have two graduates who are in Hollywood, California, where they have been working on uh, television shows, on motion pictures. Uh, it's a big world. And if our students are willing to relocate to where the jobs are, they can succeed and do very, very well. And many, many have. And I will say not only the students, but their employers are very complimentary of the training yeah. they got at Isothermal Community College. And again, I think it's one of the best broadcasting uh, programs, not only in North Carolina, but any surrounding area. And we're very proud of the students that came through. Uh, let me, we've talked about WNCW. I want to talk a little bit about WCAB and Mr. <laughs> Friday Night because oh you also announced on WCAB, but you were the voice of high school football every Friday night during football season in Rutherford County. How did you fall into the job at WCAB and start announcing football? <sighs> it was an accident. Uh, no, I, a former student, a graduate of our program actually, was working at WCAB and he called me up one day and he said, hey, we need somebody to do play-by-play -play high school football. And I said, oh, you've done it before and I had in Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. And I said, yeah. He says, well, would you like to do it here? And I said, well, you know, I've got my full-time job and it keeps me busy. He said, well, you'd be working with me. And that was an opportunity I, I couldn't pass up because probably the greatest joy I get as an instructor, as a former instructor, when I have the opportunity to work with former students and graduates out there in the real world, that is the most awesome feeling that you can possibly have. Um, yeah, the Friday night football thing, I did it to start with for a one-year trial, and then it became two years, and then it became five years, and then it became 10 years. Uh, I did have to take one year off back in 2004, but then immediately they wanted me back in 2005, and I continued it up through last year. And it was fun. Uh, I told people it was my hobby, and it really was. Uh, is, there, is there any one game, player, or season that stands out during those 26 years? Many. Uh, I was very fortunate. I saw Keon Whiteside play at Chase High School uh, back in the late 90s. He, of course, went on to the NFL. I saw Carlos Watkins also play at Chase. Uh, he goes on to Clemson, wins a national championship, now playing in the NFL. And so many memorable games and, and players. Probably the one that sticks with me the most, 2005, East Rutherford High School had what I thought was a state championship team third round of the playoffs. There is a city right down the highway that gets in our way a lot when it comes to football, Shelby. And in the third round of the playoffs, East battling Shelby, ah, oh, we're all tied up at the end of the game. We go to overtime. And a very controversial touchdown by Shelby 
at the end of the overtime, it took a long time for me personally <laughs> to get over it because we went back and we looked at that tape over and over and over and it clearly did not look like the ball crossed the goal line for the touchdown. Yeah. And I was convinced, I said, we got robbed <laughs> of a state title. Yeah. Uh, there, other, Jerry Cash, what can I say about Coach Cash? I met Coach Cash when he first came to East Rutherford High School. He was there for 13 seasons. Then he retired, only to see him come back to Thomas Jefferson Classical Academy, 10 seasons as the head coach there. And in both places, he built a football program. He's just a great guy. Jay, I think we're getting a little short on time, but I've got a couple of more questions I want to ask you uh, quickly. Uh, over the years, you've been involved in broadcasting and education for many, many years. Yep. Have you seen both of those things change over those years? Drastically. Uh, obviously, the technology. Uh, when I first started in radio and TV, not only were we dealing with a thing called tape, uh, but we were also still doing a little bit with film. Uh, and then, of course, we saw the uh, beginning of the Internet in the mid-90s, uh, and now everything has become totally digital. Uh, so obviously the technology has changed dramatically. The business has changed, too. We used to have a lot more radio and TV stations owned by individual, local owners. And nowadays, that has changed to where it's pretty much corporate owned in most cases. Right. Well, I want to have one more question to ask you, but I do want to thank you for all you have done for this community, for Isothermal Community College, for the two radio stations you worked at. Uh, it's, it was my pleasure to work with you, and I, I appreciate all the support you gave while I was here at Isothermal. And I would merely ask at the end, I know I haven't asked all the questions I wanted to ask, and may, there may be an answer out there that you want to give, something you want to say before we close this out. So I'm going to turn it over to you. And you have the microphone, Mr. Friday Night. Wow. Uh, what can I say? Uh, you know, three decades I invested here in Isothermal Community College, and I'm always going to have a place in the heart for this place. Um, I've also grown to love Rutherford County since being here for 32 years. Uh, not too long ago, I was talking to somebody and I said, you know, you can take a person out of Rutherford County and move them someplace else, but you can never take the Rutherford County out of the person. And this community has been great. The college has been great. I've worked with some great people. Uh, gosh, my, my colleagues here in the broadcasting program, our administration, including yours, uh, keep in mind, I've worked for three different college presidents uh, and a number of deans. Uh, but my colleagues here in the program, the administration, just can't say enough. Thank you. Uh, it, it's been a great experience. Well, we cannot say enough thanks to you, and we want to thank Jay Coombs for being on this episode of History Matters. Again, thank Isothermal Community College and its library and Kathy Webb for putting on this History Matters series. Uh, go to the website. You'll be able to see future events, programming like this, and perhaps things in the library auditorium that I think you will find of interest, and I think you will learn things about this wonderful county and the community where you are living, and uh, it just adds to our full life here in Rutherford County. So thank you for watching. Thanks, Jay Coombs, for being here today.